Call me Hano. <laughs> hey, uh, man. Feels good to surf the wave with you again. And yeah, we about to surf the wave like we never surfed the wave before, man. We got all cons on deck, man. Some real great wave surfers that I want to surf the wave with. Uh, you know what I mean? So we're going to have some fun, man. Talk about some things. Talk about some stuff. The Water for Drop Nation. All your contribution, man, for Joy World. Everything you're doing to help us build our fence. We appreciate you, man. Continue to click the links uh, below and, you know, support the flow, man. Keep supporting the reconstruction pack. Shout out to Joseph, the real nine spiral, my pack one, everything in a drop shot, MHOE. You know what I mean? And hey, I've been just, you know, I appreciate all my Naga's patience, man. I know I got some catching up to do on uh, a few packs going out. So uh, if that's you, if you haven't got your pack yet, just look forward to getting that joint this week or early next week. Me and uh, Chef Connie are working hard to get everything back to you. We've been pushing it hard for Joy World. I've been pushing it hard for the Preston. And, you know, I don't know why, man. It just took, it felt like we had to hit that mark, you know, right when we did, you know. So I put all the energy in that, man. Of course, we got family things going on. Everything's happening. Everybody's going through it. So we appreciate your patience. And we're getting all your your packs out this week and next week. And we're just going to keep it popping, man. We appreciate your support. So, again, support the reconstruction pack by Yosef the Real and Not Spiral. A hop to the breads, man. And A hop to the bro, Five Eyes Ma, a.k.a. My Jigga. Or My Jigga, a.k.a. Five Eyes Ma, man. <laughs> we serving away with you, bro. You're making great music, man. And the Ma Pack one is just the beginning. We're talking tribal music, M-H-O-E. Hey, it feels good, man, to have all this creativity going all the way up. And drop nation. The culmination is right there on our land, building our fence, building our tribe, you know, in real time, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Conclave. I see you out there working for Joy World, man, and all the cons touching down. Hey, I see CJ touching down. Big Dizzle, I see you, man. I mean, the cons are touching down. The battles, what it do, it's all happening, man. We appreciate all my nuggets. It's all the way up. So let's go, man. We surfing the way like we never surfed the way before. Having a good time. Yeah, you know, let's, uh, I stumbled on this memorial to myth mythical Preston, right? They want you to be a myth. They want the con to be a mythology. But remember, they were searching for this mythological person for 500 years. Yeah, man. I don't know. I mean, unless we all crazy, unless we all crazy, <laughs> y'all were searching, right? Can't be that much of a myth. But Lego, I mean, people didn't make it, right? This is in memory of these seafarers who searched. So people died over the course of 500 years looking for the Prester. People never came back looking for Prester John. Yeah, buddy, we just surfing away. <laughs> so this person is dropping on a uh, shout out to uh, uh, G-Q-E-B-E-R-H-A, man. All right, man, you popping off, man. You talking to Preston, you popping off. Yeah, hold up, man, hold up, man. Make sure I get my disclaimer. A disclaimer. I said disclaimer. <laughs> Fair use in y'all caboose bone. I'm a, you know, we're going to be featuring some great drive from some great, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, content creators, you know what I'm saying? Real ones, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, teachers, educators, scholars, all that cons, you know what I mean? You know, a, a good variety of drops. So we're going to surf the way for educational purposes. Fair use 107 copyright. Ja, 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 ja. Ping, pow. All in your caboose bone. Let's go. All right. Uh, Lego. Let's go. 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 John and a Portuguese navigator. It was the quest for Prester John as a Christian ally that led to expeditions to reach him by sailing around Africa. The 
the monument is believed to be the only monument in the world depicting Presta John. Along with the That's kind of interesting they say that, right? This is the only monument in the world depicting the priest king Presta John. Hear that again? See, uh, every language, let's just get it back, man. I mean, this monument is in South Africa. They say what, Port Elizabeth City Hall. For all the Portuguese, we're going to get into some great drop by the Ak Kuri Mayo. Kan Kan Kuri Mayo going into these Portuguese and, you know, um, you know, a great painting, you know, depicting. Well, we'll get into it. You know, we're talking about nobility. Nobility on this side, nobility on that side. But we know on that side, they searching for the Preston. It's a very interesting thing going on here. You know what I'm saying? You got, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, where's uh, Charles? At? Where was Charles at? Man? Hey, where's Charles at when you need him, man? <laughs> Probably Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor. So you got Charles, your boy here. 1500s looking for the Presta, right? Okay. <laughs> Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, by virtue of the true frame in his Habsburg jaw. Wow. Typical. In typical lying albino fashion, this painting is falsely called Balthazar, the Moorish King. Oh, they don't want to tell you <laughs> that it's Charles the Fifth, Charles Kento, circa fifteen twenty-five by the Dutchman Joes von Kling. I know it's a little blurry. The clothing is European, the scepter is European, the orb is European. Note similarities with the scepter, orb, and imperial crown of Austria. Oh, he's just a Moorish king. Nah, this King Charles, man. This Charlesy boy, man. You know Charles. We all met Charles before. Yeah. This painting can be dated circa 1800. We're talking about the Larco Museum in Lima, Peru. Depicting the Inca emperors. This panel shows the last seven Inca emperors and the subsequent first European emperor. Who's that? Charlesy. You know? <laughs> looking like uh, you know, looking like JT from the hood, you know what I'm saying? JT, TJ, you know what I mean? <laughs> looking like a regular nug, right? So this is what the war is looking like. You know, we're not over here trying to pull no scabs from no wounds, but if you are hurt, you need to know why. If you if you feel broken up inside, you don't know why, you gotta find you know what I'm saying? the You got to find the nucleus of the issue, man. The whole entire family's brokenhearted, man. Anytime a family gets hijacked by family, it hurts. It's generational hurt, you know. Psychologically, emotionally, physically. Because they took your things. Yeah, that papal bull did not refer to old Charles in there, man. Because Charles is popping off. All the Charleses are popping off. Okay. All right. Let's back it up. <laughs> Point is, that, that same old Charles here, Oh, Charles. Charles is looking for the Preston. Charles is looking for the Wong Ka Preston John. Same complexion. One is searching and searching and searching. And that's Charles in the 1500s, man. Okay. Remember, 
and memory of those seafarers who searched for Preston John from 1145 to 1645. In the 1500s, in the 1500s, this is Charles. 1525, my God. And in 1525, they still searching, Con. For who? The Prester, man. The Prester. And we having fun. We kicking back. Hey, call me Hano. Shout out to all my Nagas that rode the, the wave with a Naga. You know, through the entire Preston John investigation. And shout out to my Nagas that belly flop that, that jumped in on Preston 50 or 60 or 70. And, you know, are still surfing the wave and getting the drop. And it will continue exclusively at 432thedrop.com. And, uh, hey, you know, shout out to my Naga Negus, Russell or Rosell. Shout out to you and the family, you know, going up to the uh, Etowa, Etowa mounds and you know just you know bring it to life you know that uh shikamagwa battlefield and just the honor you gave us and we give the honor right back to you managa and the goose you know he said hey um <laughs> this press to flow you know they would say you know um i guess out there you got different communities you know you got a community of nagas that say hey we're black and we're Indian and we're black Indians and that's what we're doing. We're black Indians, all right? And others that say, hey, we're Hebrew, we're Hebrew, that's what we're doing. We're going to Israel, get your passport, let's go. Then you got Nagas, who I guess they call indigenous, uh, <laughs> indigenous Israelite. Uh, they say this is the indigenous Israelite movement where you know you already at home, you know, even the Moors know, right? So this is Morocco. So we know we're at home. We know we're in the ancient biblical lands, the ancient biblical world. We know that Judah is here, that Jacob, that that Yosef is here, that Moshe, Mexico is here. You know what I'm saying? So, and then we're pulling this, what they would call a biblical flow into this indigenous flow. So, you know, if you're, if you have, uh, you know, popped off and shout out to my Nagas popping off because Hawa is bringing you to the to the drop in different form. You have to be formatted the way you got to be formatted. You know what I'm saying? You might have to wake up to being uh, the Jew or the Israelite, you know, and that's what you're, that's how you're waking up. You might be popping off on the flat drop and the orientation, and that's how you popping off. You might be popping off to the indigenous flow and say, hey, I'm indigenous. I got genealogies. And that's how you popping off. So shout out to all my Nagas popping off. We ain't over here, you know, uh, putting nothing above nothing, man. We just are bringing the Nagas together. And that's what, you know, I really appreciate by my Naga and the Goose bringing that out. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a flow, you know what I mean, that you can't ignore. If you're indigenous here, you can't ignore the king of the Indians, can you? The king of India superior, can you? Which means you can't ignore the Presta, the Presta Wa, Wan Khan, King David, which brings in the biblical flow. Now we ain't talking Jesus and Yahweh Shies and all that, because that's the new tune to bring you out this ancient love song that Hawaii has a covenant with Dawi, Psalms 89, Hosea 3, A. Hey. And David will rise again, Jeremiah 30. One shepherd, Ezekiel 37. We right here with receipts that the so-called white man, they can't make up the ancient love song. They can just twist it and give you a new tune and give you a new doctrine, give you a new power. But we most high over everything, so he dies to hijack. We connect directly to our source. And Hosea 3 said we're going to wake up. Israel will return. Seek Hawa directly. Then get on our Preston flow. Priest flow. David flow. Huh? It's the most exciting investigation. Not just as a YouTube series, Managa, but as you and your personal, you know, your personal creative flow got to be around 
the code. You got to be seeking Hawaii, MHOE. You got to be KTC, keeping the code. That, that's your creative flow. Got to connect to the creator, huh? You can't be creative without the creator, without your source. Other than that, you just, you know, uh, going off fumes, man. You ain't powered up. You ain't charging up. That's when we get in the press to flow, and that's a personal journey you got to take. However you get here, we over here just to make the walk with you, but you got to connect to Dawi. You got to search. You got to see how it connects to the indigenous Israelite connection, the Tacom say flow. Try to tribe them up. Tribe of who? The tribes of Israel or Hawa's seed, Hawa's remnant. However you, you know, perceive it, you know what I'm saying? However you communicate it, just know that Hawa has a seed forever, and that seed forever is that righteous shoot, the righteous branch that's promised to the shepherd. Jeremiah 23 and 33. Hey, Dawada Hawa. Like I said, we serve in a way that we never served the way before. They looking for a black man, right? That's what they would say. An Ethiopian, Emperor de los Abyssinios. Abyssinios is a mixed multitude. Where's Ethiopia? Where's Africa? Where's Northwest of Maxim Africa? <laughs> this black man, so-called, is being hunted. I mean hunted by this black man. It's a black on black war or more and more war or a black on more war. Hence the black of more. Because we're just talking about the Holy Roman Empire, Emperor. And if this is what the Holy Roman Emperor is looking like in the mid 1500s, my naga, then you got to know that this is who's behind the scenes. And they use this so-called white man as a straw man, as an illusion. Who took them out of power? Who took down the real Charles family? They found America, man. They were searching for a mighty long time. Mighty long time. A mighty long time. Fleming Square behind the Port Elizabeth City Hall in Goblin Beck Avenue stands a monument dedicated to the mythical king priest, Prester John, and the explorers <coughs> who discovered South Africa. The Prester John Memorial was unveiled in 1986 by the... <laughs> they said the Portuguese explorers who discovered South Africa. What the... What the... How do you discover South Africa, Mr. Portuguese man? How do you discover South Africa? You didn't know it was right there? Oh, so you just now stumbled on it. They discovered that these people crack. Then Portuguese ambassador to South Africa. The memorial consists of a large Coptic cross, and in the central circle are the figures of Prester John and a Portuguese navigator. It was the quest for Prester John as a Christian ally that led to expeditions to reach him by sailing around Africa. The monument is believed to be the only monument in the world depicting Prester John. Along with looking for a route to the east, the Portuguese were also looking for the kingdom of this legendary monarch who was supposed to rule over a land with many riches and wild animals and was said to be as wise as King Solomon. It took the Portuguese 500 years to map the way to the east via the Cape and their search for Prester John was to no avail. Ha <laughs> ha, they said it. they never found the man. That's crazy because the British Museum has him right, you know. In America, you know, a man with land filled with riches. The only monument in the world depicting Prester John. Along with looking for a route to the east, the Portuguese were also looking for the kingdom of this legendary monarch who was supposed to rule over a land with many riches and wild Yeah, California gold rush, right? Wild animals. And was said to be as wise as King Solomon. To this is David. This is Solomon's pops, right? <laughs> These are the Magi. The Portuguese 500 years to map the way to the east via the Cape, and their search for Prester John was to no avail.
Yeah, I guess they never found the Preston. I guess they never found the Preston. So we got this on Preston. One Hano, call me Hano. It took six, seven years to get to this checkpoint. You got to call me Hano. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's an honor, man. You know, and before we, you know, write our book, you know what I'm saying, coming straight out of Drop Nation, I'm not even going to put the title out there because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people duplicating, you know what I mean? You know, it's a lot of reflection. <laughs> nah, man, but, you know, everybody should be popping off right now. Before we get to the book and to all the great things I was putting on our heart ball to flow with, you know what I mean? Just just enjoy and be present at a great time, man. You know, that we did such great work together, um, such great consistent investigation. And, you know, now it's time to, you know, just make everything run, man. Make make the flow, you know, fluid for a knock at 432, the drop. You know, dot com exclusively, you know what I'm saying? And just make that the home and the place to get the steady daily flow and, you know, the checkpoints and, you know what I'm saying, all our drop. You know, we we shared enough over here on this platform. And that's why we're building 432 com. So, you know, just look out for us. They say this is the only monument depicting Preston John. You know, looks like uh, Uncle Lee, man. <laughs> It's like, you know, Uncle Jack right here, man, you know. But this Presta is this Presta. And they said to no avail, they never found him, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. Still looking. The Presta John Memorial stands proudly in Fleming Square next to the City Hall in Port Elizabeth. The monument was erected in 1986 and is one and is of the late king priest Preston John and a Portuguese navigator so you know I'm about to pass the wheel to the bro queen mayo and dig on some of this Portuguese business man you know see what's happening over there and you know this all connects with this South Africa because this is where they popping off at and we got that straight of Magellan drop they popping off right out of South Africa, going right through the Straits of Magellan. Yeah. Hey, Charles was behind that too, man. Charles is busy, man. Char Charles is doing a lot of things, man. In the 1500s, other than searching for the Preston. Another knock. Hey. They say the truth sounds stranger than fiction. They still got their scepters while they give us uh, presidents and vice presidents and governments and senates and all this stuff. <laughs> they still are called kings and queens to their circle. They just got smart about it. Put us into a matrix, you know. And they found the land of the Preston when they found you. When they found you, they found the land of the Khan, Nagaville. But hey, <laughs> Cudi Mayo, let's drop on these Portuguese, man. And this uh, Order of Santiago, Black Portuguese Night, the King's Fountain, man. Great drop. Cuimeo, take the wheel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ping pow. Let go. Let go.
before this bro even pops off, just look at this man. All right, so this is Portugal. All right. So when they when the Portuguese are coming out of South Africa, just know that these Portuguese are looking like Africans, kind of, because we we're just talking, you know, Morocco and all that, right? So <laughs> Morocco's in North Africa. They popping out of South Africa. Oh, they discover the Portuguese discover South Africa. They're already in Africa. It's more and more war. <laughs> and they're in Europe, right? Spain, Portugal. This is 1570, 1580. They're still searching for Preston John, right? Up until what, 1645, God. I just, just want to make sure. We we focused. Okay. All right. This is a Portuguese monument. Right? Okay. Searching for the press. Let's go. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get, you know, a couple minutes of the intro, belly flop, you know, in the middle, and then I'm going to get the dismount. And I'm going to do that for all the great, you know what I'm saying, you know, droppers out there, all the ether squad. <laughs> Out there, man, just putting it in the ether, all drop nation, and we just gonna get some great features. So I'm gonna get a couple of minutes on the intro, you know, belly flop, and then we're gonna get the dismount. Hey, let's go, man. We surfing away. Kuri mayo. Look at these knockers, man. Look at these knockers. Look at these knockers, man. All over the place. Naga, 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 naga. <laughs> These are the Portuguese, man. More naga. Naga's in the back. Look at this naga. Naga's up top. Naga's on the bottom. Naga, naga everywhere. Portugal. So before we start, I actually wanted to show you what they're going to be talking about in this video, which is this painting of, of uh, 1570, around 1570-1580 in Portugal, Lisbon, Portugal. And I'm going to zoom in. First, I'm going to read. It says, Dutch painting of the Chafaris del Rey, a square with the king's fountain. Lisbon, Portugal. The man who is believed to be the king is wearing the cross of the Order of Santiago, St. James which was founded in the 12th century to drive back the Moors from the Iberian Peninsula, all right? So you see that a Moor versus Moor war, that uh, symbol he got on, he's a saint. Uh, he's from the Order of Santiago, of St. James. These people were basically driving back the Moors. So that... Oh, oh, oh. man. And James is also Jacob. And shout out to my bro, Dizzle Fit. He was breaking his dad. I said, man, James is... Jacob. Now you got the Jacob by flow. I mean, you know, they're all using these titles, man. You know, just like they use Hebrew, right? Just like, oh, we these Hebrews. Well, which tribe are you? Which tribe are you? That even in your tribe, you got Nagas doing good, Nagas doing bad. You got good kings of Judah, you got bad kings of Judah. So it's not like, oh, it's Judah, it's all good. Oh, it, it's it's the Moabs, you know, Moabites, it's, it's this or that. You got good Moabites, man. I don't want to just say, oh, all, all this is that. We're talking about the trickery, man. We're talking about the illusion. We're talking about the treaties, man. You know what I'm saying? So, but you got other Nagas that weren't down with that stuff, man. So, you know, we're seeing it with a dragonfly perspective. Let's go. Kuri Mayo. This colored person was helping drive back the Moors. All right. A Moor versus Moor War. He's probably a Catholic. All right. I represented the uh catholic monarch all right just so you can see you see that see him wearing all right i've shown this before in other videos just wanted to show it again real quick because that video is talking about so you can see there's people of color all over the place this picture is a lot uh bigger this painting i mean it goes all the way over here and more on this side as well it's just a little piece of it uh but the person that's in the video is actually going to go to the original painting right now they're going to be talking about it, all right? So I wanted to show that to you guys. Let's go back to the video. Hold up, hold up, hold up. My bad, y'all. You know, you know, we got to we gotta dodge this. All right, we got to dodge this together. I'm going to do it the best way. I'm Let's mute this. Let's mute it. And ready, go. Four, three, 
two, one, breathe. <sighs> wow. All right, we got through the high jet. We did it, y'all. Let's go. So we're here in a palace just outside of Lisbon to see the painting Sephiroth del Rey. It includes a figure of a black knight. It includes a figure of a black knight, a black knight, a black knight that caught Curtis's eye two years ago online and has inspired the whole body of work he's been making here in Portugal. I just kept trying to zoom in on this pixelated image to see who this knight to be like, is he really a black knight? Is he really a black knight? A black knight? And then finding out that he is wearing the Santiago of the Red Cross. And my last name being Santiago, he is with the Santiago of the Red Cross. And my last name being Santiago, Santiago of the Red Cross. My last name being Santiago, Santiago of the Red Cross. My last name being Santiago. And there was something so romantic about this painting. Whoa. Wow. This is wild. So this is someone's house. Yes. This 15th century former royal palace is now one of the many homes of the Berardos, oh. one of Portugal's wealthiest families. Oh, I think I found it. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Much of what we know about the reign of the Moors was discovered in works of art. And although the artist of this painting <coughs> isn't known, it tells us a lot about the Lisbon of its time. When you look at a painting online, you can only see so much. Oh, but the way that knight is painted is so beautiful. He's so noble. He's so noble. He's so noble. Yeah. And his eye is on a completely different horizon. My understanding of the painting becomes dramatically different when I can actually see the interactions going on. When I look at like the people who are lower caste dressed, you see a mix of different nationalities. When you say or, when you say nationalities, but like cultures, cultures, yeah, yeah. When you say it's different from what you imagine, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Hey, well, there's more black people. Hey, well, there's more black people. There's more black people. There's more black people. There's more black people. <laughs> First of all, because the image becomes some images you can't tell the shadow. Sure. Look at this this character, and it's my sensitivity because I'm of African descent. You see this character being carried away by what is it, security? Which, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It's not too different. I love how naive this painting is. It, 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 it's closer to the images I'm making than I thought. Mm -hmm. Of these two men here, like the conversation and. Again, I'm drawn to the moments of like mixed race interaction when mm -hmm. it's a higher something that appear to be like a higher or higher hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, these are things I you can't tell until you see it. Now I can incorporate how the lace is made there, the hint of that. Oh, that face is gorgeous. They have wet rings, so they're of the order, possibly younger. But both men of color. Ooh. Men of color, they're both men of color. Oh, belly flop. <laughs> all right, all right. I belly flopped into the music. <laughs> hey, hey, hop. Goody Mayo, man. That was a, a quick snippet there, man. But make sure you. Or, you know, surfing away, man. Look at this bro popping off, oh, man. Shout out to Cooter Mayo getting over that 100K mark, man. And he does it for the tribe, man. So I feel like Drop Nation, man, is, is, is you know, <laughs> popping off, man. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, um, you know, as this bro is vibing up, man. And it feels so good, man. So, hey, hi, bro, man. Thank you for all you do for the tribe, man. And all you continue to do to shake things up in Hijack City, man. And let them know, you know, that... uh. On this side of things, man, you know, it's pure water flow. And this water's going to continue, man. So, hey, how to the bread. Good evening, Like I said, man, my bro over here, man. The Nagoose, man. Nagoose Russell. Russell. I hope I'm saying it. Russell. 
Shout out to the bro, man. He gave some special honor to drop nation. And, you know, this is like for us to talk about the Sheikh Ramaga war, war is one thing. To look at the battlefield is a whole nother experience. And, you know, we're going to kind of belly flop around this, man. And see what we're doing, man. You know, let's go. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get the intro. <laughs> And then we're going to go into it. Uh, hey, hop to the Nagoose. Is that the Etowa? Etowa Mound? Just a little pre. Uh, Etowa. <laughs> Let's just enjoy. Let's enjoy. It's what's underground, people. Uh, got the fan band, man. Shout out to the fan. They want to see it in real time. I'm not looking at that map. Again, this is the Etowah Mounds. Right now, I cannot see the chat. So you all just bear with me. This is just... Pre show. This is the pre show. So you are early. You are on time. Please enjoy. Yeah, I'm going to stay in the back. The show is brought to you past me. by someone that had a show. Go ahead, Amir. How long you were so in front? You can tear the club up. Good morning. And go revisit. Let him go on up there. Yeah. The Chickamauga Battlegrounds. He, he feels the spirit mountain. better than we do. All of that. Yeah, Let's yeah. enjoy the free show. And this was Underground Family. I should have brought the drone. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, pop. Let's get it. Let's get it. Feeling the passion of what the natives or the indigenous people was going through as they was having cannonballs flown out, bullets at the size of a 69 caliber, 69 caliber bullet mm. coming out of those rifles. So I started feeling it. And I think we are in tune with the weather because when my spirit started to go down from what I was reading, it started to rain. These are some of the cannons that that, that was used. Mm. Indiana. Everybody was here. Everybody. Con con. Cool, cool. The entire country coming to one state. Mm-hmm. I mean, you talk about a world war, they they bringing everybody. He, he's going, you're going to see him, uh, you know, Ohio, like you say, Indiana. You're going to see, I think, Wisconsin. Like, you're going to see all kind of areas coming into the same spot to do what? Fight against these Shikamaba, man. The first 20 years from 1776 to 4th of July. First 20 years is fighting these tribes, man. And it continued after that. But they labeled them Shikamagua Wars for the first 20 years. Then you got the Tecumse War. So this bro seeing it in real time, man. And we feeling it, man. We looking at this like, this is where it's popping off at. Battlefield, battleground. You put up a big fight, my naga. They didn't bring you from Africa with no fight. They found you here, and you put up a great fight the whole time. You had no time to be no slave. You've been fighting in these wars, the Shikamaga Wars. All day fight. How, how can you shoot bullets all day? This.
can walk to all of them. And you can walk through the woods and they have monuments and stuff in the woods. Mm. All throughout. Battleground, all that. As you can see, it's a lot to cover. Another field. Battleground. Stuff to walk through as far as your eye can see. And this battlefield goes from the Trail of Tears all the way to Lookout Mountain. And we haven't even made it to the Trail of Tears yet, but I want you to see that this field of, of, of death runs from the Trail of Tears all the way to Lookout Mountain. Unbelievable. Okay. This is where it's all happening at. The battlefield is going up. Naga. But Naga field. Tribing up against the hijack. Do you remember who you are? Trying to go ahead and land, fast forward that a little bit. Okay, this is the uh, spiritual grounds. And uh, <coughs> this is a uh, holy piece of land. Uh, it's surrounded by churches. Uh, hopefully, I, I think I put the video in here where we drive past the church and all of that good stuff. Uh, so I'm trying to get the drone through here so we can get to the uh, the cavern. And uh, it's very cool up under there. There's a waterfall and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to fast forward it just a tad. There we go. God, God, what they do? Hey, shallow My bro popping off. He over there on them grounds. <laughs> At least you all can see the spiritual grounds where they would um, sing, worship. In this room here, the acoustics. For just one hundred dollars, dentists are calling the next best thing. You can see how big the rock, the rocks are. Uh oh. Uh oh. Twelve thousand vibrations per minute. Yeah. <laughs> Open. You may find. Uh, those precious stones or crystals that they was talking about is all over in this area. All you have to do is knock the rocks open and you'll see what's inside. Uh, that's a tree growing from inside the rock. I just wanted to catch that. Thought that was interesting. See the tree come up out the rock like that. Yeah, pa. <laughs> Don't want to hit Jasmine with the drones, uh, just keep it easy. <laughs> Try it not. We're gonna get this dismount. Unbelievable. I saw the work you you was putting in my life. You didn't want to give your land up. You didn't want to give your freedom up. Your spirituality. So 
I want you all to see a lot of people came here for this civil war that they tried to play off so lightly. But like I tell everyone, it was a biblical war. Biblical. She could model. Chattanooga, mm. <laughs> Michigan, <laughs> they needed everybody, they needed everybody to conquer or not. Oh, wow, yeah. it's time to get in that car. <laughs> car, car. <laughs> Just trying to show y'all some of the things that's up there. And this is just a small piece of Rock City was so crowded mm. that uh, we couldn't get inside of Rock City. Um, so, you know, that was a little, you know, discouraging a little bit. But it was what it was. And I just wanted you all to see, you know, that area. And now when you watch um four three two the drop with the Preston John series, he's getting into the Chickamauga Wars. But he's on a biblical journey. He's on the biblical side. And what I'm trying to show everyone is that he's coming from a whole different angle with the biblical stuff. And as you can see, it's into our reality and we just call it a civil war. Right. But it's the same war that we all know about. So I just wanted to share that with you. Hey, I want to give you the honor right back and to, you know what I'm saying, all of our community members, man, you know what I'm saying, just surfing the wave. None of us got all the, all the answers and nothing like that. And, you know, um, if I can, you know, continue to uh, do the dragonfly with my bro and, you know, offer what he's saying, it's not so much, oh, the biblical uh, you know, on the biblical side, the A side, the B side. Nah, man, you know, it's the code. You can't have the earth without a creator. You know, you don't got the creator without the code. You know what I'm saying? The code is the frequency, is Hawa. Hawa is the code. It is, there's no separating. You can't just say I'm indigenous and not care about the code, the frequency of Hawa, the frequency that is our frame and our shape. You out of cold, you out of Hawaii, you, you you can't feel the existence. And this is why your land gets stolen, man. You can't be so Indian and not care about your land getting stolen time and time again because you out of cold. Cause it would be impossible for your land to get stolen when you're in cold and protected by Hawaii, the creator, most high over everything. All those little false gods and all them all them little idols and all that lesser magic and all that stuff, man, got us shut down. They took advantage of our, our low frequency while we got further and further away from the source. So it's not just some type of religious thing. We're just talking about the code. Everything has a code. The flower that grows has a code. You don't think these hijacks got a code? They're putting you in jail all the time based on their code that keeps changing. But they get the basis from you. From the code of Hashirah, of Israel, that you're supposed to keep. So don't be so Indian that you forget about the code and say, oh, the Bible, the white man gave us the Bible. Nah, the white man remixed and gave you an excellent new tune and really, who's the white man anyway? <laughs> Cause it's a more and more war, and King James looks just like you, my knight. They remixed your flow and gave you a new tune. Brought their gods from Europe to America. Brought Jupiter, calls him Jesus. Brought Zeus, calls him Jesus. <laughs> they brought their gods, man. You celebrate them on your holidays, holy days, right? 
who's holy anyway. So we bring it together, whether you call it an indigenous Israelites, man. We just call ourselves code keepers. We know we're indigenous. We know we ain't spinning on no ball. We know that our frequency is in the nine code, the four, three, two flow. And yeah, we keep the code because we're the indigenous cons, code keepers. Firm, fix it, immovable. Whatever you want to patent that. We just call it the wave, man. You surfing it? Hey, the water you for surfing it. And the water to my naga, Ned Goose, Roselle, for surfing the wave. Hey, <laughs> it's time to have an aqua pop ball. I said, it's time to have an aqua pop ball. From Nation, we just surfing the wave with you. Because I know you surfing the wave with me and my aqua copper color creation. Who's popping off copper land, one thou wow, dropping her foundations man and putting up the Nagaville flag man let's let's surf the wave let's get some intro belly flop and get a dismount with my aqua copper color creation you see it man go surf the wave hello wow they go cold keeper most high over everything Monogaville. <laughs> Let's go, Aqua. Yeah, all up in that caboose ball. All up in that caboose ball. <laughs> Let's get it. Cool. That's that Joshua flow. Mm-hmm. Aqua popping off. <laughs> Taking our colors back, man. God, God. La wa. Tau. You see the tau. Let's get it. That's crazy because I'll be seeing that in the skies, man, like every day, <laughs> even around the moon at night, man. It's so humbling to not know what you're really looking at, no matter how many books you read. <laughs> like, it's so humbling to look at this, the moon and really not even know for sure what you're looking at. Don't get no more humbling than that. Let's belly fly. Okay. All right now. So um let's go ahead and go through another article I found real quickly. And let's go out qua papa. I think this is the history of the rainbow serpent. Just a little background of it real quickly. I just wanted to go over this. There's so much information out there, guys, um, that that resonates with me. And I'm just a little back. Um, all my signs match up with all my research. So I'm still on investigation, but I'm feeling really good about this thing. <laughs> all right. The rainbow serpent, also referred to as the rainbow snake or the rainbow monster. 
has been seen across the world in different mythologies. The rainbow serpent is a huge python-like creature. However, the color of the creature tends to vary. Some say that this creature is celestial blue. Others say that it is multicolored. And others say it had yellow and red stripes down its body. Wow. The variations in color is due to the fact that there are many different areas that have the rainbow serpent as part of their mythology. Australia, Congo, Dahomey, Haiti, um, Melanesia. Mm. Nigeria, Papua New Guinea, Polynesia. Different references claim that this serpent lives in different areas, but in all these references, they claim that this creature lives in water, deep pools, lakes, or billabongs. Still, during the drier seasons, this creature is said to sleep in the mud, but in the wet seasons, it is said to rise and fly. And therefore, people could see it shining in the air. As a matter of fact, the Australian mythology points out that the rainbow serpent, much like the Chinese dragon you, carved deep riverbeds and gullies when they traveled across the earth. Again, like Chinese dragons, the rainbow serpent was said to be kind toward humans and to enjoy the finer things in life like jewelry and pearls. However, if disturbed at the wrong time, the dry seasons, the rainbow snake may cause flooding and death. Still, this creature did not like blood. Wow. Stories of the Rainbow Serpent. Uh, and in, Austra in Australian myth. Sorry, family. I am working off no sleep, and <laughs> I'm exhausted. But I had to get this video out, so please excuse me. I'm, no tripping, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm get it together. I'm getting it together, I promise. Very good. Very good. In Australian myth. It was said that the rainbow serpent was a greedy creature, which held all the water and vegetation of the world because the humans did not need it. Although many tried to persuade or slay the dragon in order to obtain the vegetation and water, it was to no available. So a shaman transformed himself into a beautiful creature and flew around the rainbow snake, thus distracting it. Then the rainbow serpent was slain and the vegetation and waters of the world were lost. There are many different names for the rainbow serpent. Read more about the rainbow serpent within Australian myth. In the Homi myth, the rainbow serpent called Edioedo was the first being into the world. And this creature helped to create the universe by transforming Mawa, the supreme god, through the cosmos. This creature also created the mountains and was also in Ouroboros to Mawa, ordered Edioa Hawero to coil beneath the world to support it. It is said that when the sea runs out of iron for the dragon, Edioero will eat its own tail, and thus the world will fall into the water. In Congo's myth, this creature is seen as an evil creature who remained in rivers and lakes and whose reflections were commonly seen in waterfalls. Okay. So these are two good articles um, on the Rainbow Serpent. All right. Let's get it going. All right, family. I won't make it too long because, like I said, this is going to be a part um, two with uh, a little more digger deepening um, who we truly are. This is a revelation to me, and I am seeking. I am thirsty. I, I'm, I just want to know you know, truly who I am, where I come from, so I know where I'm going. That's all. That's it. I'm just doing an investigation just like everybody else, but just maybe a little more, go a little more deeper, just like a couple other people I know. But that's okay. Let's keep going. So let's go over. Oh, I'm so excited. We're finally here. Let's go over my pictures, family. Mama Copper did her thing. She came through with these pictures, and I am so excited to show them so these pictures are showing um that we have orbs following us we have angels and dragons hmm. that have been literally um dwelling with us the rainbow um dragon to be exact for me um there is uh, we have different orbs so let's look at some things um on the pictures family. Let me bring them up. One second. All right. 
So let's start with this picture. This video family is a portal. Okay? So for let's play it again. So for those that see this, you see how they're connecting each other? Straight portal. I'm seeing a lot of rainbows, family. All right, a lot of rainbows. I'm excited. All right, this one, family. Okay, meteors. This look like hmm, lots and lots and lots of meteors. I'm gonna play this again. Look at this. You know they cloak together, family, when traveling. Yes. Is serious. Let's see here. All right. Let's keep it going. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. So, all right. So we got this one. I went ahead and zoomed in um, to this one. It kind of shapes you. So this is the emerald orb that follows me everywhere I go. Um, it shapes you into the wings and different things. So this is a one I zoomed in on, and it's an emerald orb with wings. All right, let's go to the next one. And there it is again. I didn't zoom in, but like Nayan Spiral said, it's always emitting with the sun, raising the sun, or next to the sun. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you guys look at these images, the sun is it's right next to the sun. And then you have something right here. So, you know, I haven't really... To be honest, I haven't really been able to dissect these pictures, family. I've been so busy. I'm just, you know, I've had them. My mom always makes sure she send what she needs. Or when we together, you know, we make sure we get these videos. But it's a lot of videos. And I want to say a lot of these images, a lot of these um, rainbow serpent, serpents were not caught on a camera phone. They were caught through uh, Arlo. Uh, Arlo video surveillance can pick them up. Mm -hmm. I mean, any video surveillance probably can, but mm -hmm. I'm going to show you. Arlo really can catch it. So, shout out to Mama Copper. Hey, she, uh, she, wow, she, she, she uh, ma. I'm moving around so fast. I, <laughs> I, I didn't catch anything. <laughs> hey, we catching this drop right now, man. And uh, we're going to get to this dismount. And Aqua, you're doing phenomenal work. And please keep it flowing. Hey, hi, Mama Copper. We're talking to Copper Color Creation. Let's get our dismount, man. Let's go. Rainbow Color. Um, we're going to go a little bit deeper um, with the forms of angels and the jobs and how it's levels to the 144. We got levels to this. Just like it's levels and order, kings, queens, princes, and, uh, princes and princesses in this Melchizedek. We have order with the angels. We have order with the 144 family. And we all are just in this investigation, finding out who we are, where we come from, so we can get in order. <laughs> all right, family? So if I miss anything out on part one, I'm going to recap some things on part two. Don't worry, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper on part two and just reveal the signs the Most High is giving me. Um, and it's been amazing, family. Okay, so so all my followers, hey y'all, KTC, keep the code Exodus twenty and most high over everything. Yeah, forever. Shalom, hey. <laughs> You already know. Shout out to Mama Copper. She represents man. Hey, Mama Copper said hello. Wow, I gotta hit her back. Let her know, man. We listening. We cared about this, man. Hello. Oh, wow. Hey, Mama Copper, you popping off. Copper Color Creation, you know you popping off. Y'all make sure you get in this classroom, get the part two, get all the flow. And uh, this fifth wave is going up. That's all I can say, man. Hey, Templar got something to say. Templar up. Templar up. Get in Urban Reed classroom, man. Get to the front, man. We're doing some of... Uh, Wave and Review, Part 1, Belly Flops and Press the Drops. Drop Nation, Templar Up, Press the Chop, Alego.
Get that reconstruction pack. <laughs> God, God. Natural by law, tie bad sign. Bye bye. <laughs> Let's get it. Dragon canoe, what they do? Hopping off on the try to drop, drop, chat. Check, check, check. Come, come. Can't make it up. But also at the same time, we've been able to keep it fresh and new. Primary members off. Shout out to yourself. So it comes down to Templar and up. <laughs> you know, in review over 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 the years before we begin this fifth wave let's just kind of like you know consolidate everything down God. you know and when i sit back and i think about it you know i drill the i drill things down to some basic uh, uh topics as it were you know we focused on joe Noah and the precept. Um, over the years, we, we focused on keeping the code. We talked a lot about um, the kind of solids, the nine codes, you know, the everything and the no thing. We talked about the art of storytelling, right? You know, what's a romance and a hero and archetypes. We also talked about the ages, timelines, phantoms, and duplications. And we also talked about dragons, animals, types, time, man, and you. So why is it important to uh, understand the patriarchs and the presbyters? Number one, it's un it's important to understand the, the consistency of the flow and the foundation. You see, they represent the oppressors and, 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 and the patriarchs. They represent um, a bottleneck, if you will, from which everything else flows. You see, this is why we took the time over the years to um, to study uh, the difference between the ad identic law, which is three laws, be fruitful, multiply, and rest. <laughs> and then we talk about the um, Abrahamic law. And the Abrahamic law, there are seven laws. And then we talk about the um, I'm sorry, let me go backwards. The seven laws are the Noah laws, the laws of Noah. The eight laws are the, eight, the laws of Abraham. And the nine laws are the, nine, are the laws of the nine laws of Moses. Cut. And once that law has been established, you really can't go back to the time before.
media. You know, it took me a second to realize that when you're talking um, a presser, <clears throat> that you are also, you're still talking about a star, a pre-star. Mm. And it all plays because it's all, it all has remained true. Mm. Shout out Monago Urban Reed. He just he just connected Preston with a pre-star. We're gonna get a little bit on this Merkaba flow, star David for the dispound. So you see how it's all connected. Aqua Copper's talking about these meteors, these Prestors, these dragons. A Prester is a meteor, and a meteor is a dragon. There are the, the, the Prestors and the Patriarch. They're the mirror to which we compare their standard to our fallen standard. The Patriarch and the Prestors are the standard that we compare our fallen state to. Which leads into when you really start digging on the words and how things play and how these words evolve over time. Right? When you learn the difference between the spelling of a word and the sound of a word, the vibration. For example, in our search for Preston John, you're talking about the, you're talking about septimania, right? I don't know if it's really any. And the reason why I bring that up is because when you hear Septimania, seven cities of gold, Name for title, titles, and names, and we just hear the name of a city, right? But if set means seven, then what's what do we know is a mania, right? We get maniac and maniacal. We talk about a type of mental derangement characterized by excitement mm -hmm. and delusion. Uh, Who's excitement? Who's delusion? Okay. In the late 14th century. Pop off Templar. Who had the madness for the seven cities? Right? Who was worked up in a frenzy? A mad passion. 
right? A fury, which is all of what? Of uncertain origin. Perhaps. <laughs> the suffix root form, root of men, right? To think. To think. And I don't want to spend too much time. I want to keep it moving. We have a lot to, to go through. <laughs> oh, good. Let's get to this, man. Man, Templar, you popping off, bro. Let's go. Rest your line. We're going to talk about rest. What we're going to do, take a short little Levi, fall back. And vibrate. Obviously, the water, the, the fire has been burning, but we're gonna keep the water flowing. So we gonna we gonna do a quick quick little pause, and then we gonna do a little a, a part two to it all. Yeah. So hopefully we won't uh, have too much more to go. I don't think. Because there's a lot when it comes to surfing the waves. Mm -hmm. And anything that we don't cover, then it would be uh, meat for us to dig on as we take off the fifth wave. Shabbat Shalom. But the house of the family. But the house of the tribe. I love y'all. God. Hey. Hey, hi hey, to the bro. Irvin Reed, we call him the Templar, man. He he makes sure we code it up at all times, and we appreciate the bro so much for his honesty, man. He's he's really giving his heart bone to the way from day one. You know, he can give a true review. You know, what I'm saying if anyone could give a wave in review, it's the Templar, man. So Templar, a hop to you, y'all. Make sure y'all in the classroom. Click the links below. I'll make sure I connect everybody's flow, and we gonna keep belly flopping. And keep Presta dropping. Shout out to the Templar, man. Drop Nation. We all the way up, man. And hey, we've been talking dragons. And, and I mean, Aqua Copper, you know, said nine spiral is already popping off with the Cometas, with the dragons. Hey, hop to the house of nine spiral, man. We praying for Mama Spiral, man. Everybody say a special prayer for Mama Spiral. Let her spiral all the way up in health. And rejuvenation, regeneration, man, um, you know, just complete, you know, uh, re restoration, man, vibration, all that, man. Let the aqua continue to cool. We appreciate you, bro, nine. Let's get the intro, and then we'll, you know, connect to the flow. Yeah. <laughs> all in your caboose, bone. And so I call him a bird man. And Batman. All right, I'm gonna send this video out to you. And this video is called When Dracons Cloak. Okay, okay. All right. When Dracons are cloaked. But first, we're gonna get the drop, man, over in China. All right, let's rock. Uh oh. Object disrupted air traffic at the Hang Uh huh. This occurred late one evening. The airport that was close by was closed after the unidentified flying object was detected at around 9 p.m. All right. And some flights were rerouted to nearby airports. Oh. The airport had resumed operations, and more details were said to be released. Okay. A source with knowledge of the matter, however, told China Daily that authorities had learned what the UFO was after an investigation. Okay, so you see, they say UFO, but we say a damn dragon. All right? <laughs> now let's rock. But it was not the proper time to publicly disclose the information. Uh, Adding this an official explanation is expected to be given. Okay. Inbound flights were diverted to the nearby airports, while outbound flights were delayed for three to four hours. 
staff member at the airport's information desk said the airport had no idea how many flights were affected by the closure. Don't know how many, huh? At around 11 p.m. on Wednesday, he said some wrote three entries announcing the airport's closure in his log. Okay. But they were all soon deleted. Wow. He posted an apology at midnight. Wow. Saying the news had not been confirmed, but asking those who'd republished his earlier entries to delete them. Cover up. Now, some people are torn about this object. Okay. There are those that suggest it shows a dish shaped UFO, while others have put forth the theory it could be a dragon. Huh? <laughs> Body bad. We're just talking. Hey. Hey. Let go. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. We're just talking. A fiery shooting meteor. Now I tried to do this video uh twice uh on my screencaster. And uh, again, man, there at my devices like crazy. Uh you know, so a lot of y'all familiar, you know, with my situation and, and you know my devices being hacked. And so but uh this suits me just fine. You know what I'm saying? My only reason for doing it on screencaster because I had a pointer. All right. Uh, but you know, here, man, look here. I'm gonna just call it out. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just gotta look with your ass. All right. But we're just talking a fiery shooting meteor. Let's go, Khan. Which is a dragon that is very, very, very swift, <laughs> very, very, very fierce. All right. And very, very. Violent. Okay, okay. So let's not get it twisted, huh? Pop off. Although that sounds impossible, there are those that believe these sky serpents are witnessed. Uh huh. One person said the following Although I don't personally believe in them, huh. there are those that think the skies belong to these creatures. Huh? Oh, you think not? Yes, 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 yes. You see, they have the the key, right? Or the chi. Or what we say a drop nation, they have the keys to the ether. Huh? <laughs> All right, now we're just looking for the cloak dracon at Sakurajima, the dragon cavern. All right. There you go. There you go right there, huh? <laughs> all right, we're going to bag them up, all right? Now, you know what? Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. All right. Now, bear with me, all right? I have to result to using the phone, right? All right. Give me one second. All right, we're at Sakurajima, all right, and we're just looking for the cloak dracon, all right? All right, all right, we live, we live, y'all, we cooking. Time is real, we cooking, Oh, there he is right there. There go my man's right there. He just pulled up. There he is right there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, all right, let's get that again. We're just looking for the cloak dracon, huh? And so uh to 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 uh 
Big Bird and uh, Batman. You see that? Does that look like a damn bird to y'all? Huh? Run it back. Oh, that's a bird right there? Stopping in mid-air? <laughs> Pop off, bro. Huh? That's a bird right there? No, nah, right there. Right there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, we just seen it. I mean, just let us know right now. Nah, motherfucker, you the crazy one. There he is right there. He just pulled up. That's a bird right there. No, nah, the, the one that just, no, nah, no, nah, the one that just pulled up. Pop off, Kyle. Let's get this dish back, man. Oh, wow. It's great All work. Right. Just a little uh, bonus footage uh, for Big Bird and Batman. All right. <laughs> it's for you, uh, Big Bird and Batman. Dang. We're at Sakurajima, and that is a meteor. All right, coming up out of that thing, huh? All right, I repeat, a meteor is finna come out the damn volcano. All right, so quick, so swift. And so, that being said, uh, miss us with that bird shit, nine spiral. <laughs> My bro popping off, man. Always on their neck bone. Steady flow, steady water, man. Make sure you're in the classroom at nine spiral. Steady arc, man. Look out for the ether. Squid arc. Click the links below, man. Get and you know the classrooms to drop nation, man. And I mean, it's like volcanoes popping off, man. Drop nation is really, really, really popping off, right? <laughs> Cause we natural by law. A hop to the car. A hop to the the entire uh, Shabbata tribe, family of natural by law, you know, congratulations, man, on another Yapa seed, a beautiful Ba'at, you know, to Baruch the house, man, Max Baruka, to your family, man, to your Shabbata, and you're doing great work, the bros popping off, I mean, you, you always got to hold on to your boot bones <laughs> when you are uh, going to get a ticket in that ether bus. You're going to get a ticket to the Ether bus. You're going to get a ticket to the Ether show, man. Shout out natural by law. Uh, let go. Yeah, I meditated on this. On this lesson, something heavy. Right before... I drew it up. I meditated on this. I pondered on this. I focused and I asked Hawa to allow this lesson to reach only those it's supposed to reach. To inspire those that only are supposed to be inspired by this. I ask the creator to allow this to be a pure water flow. Because I know, oh, I know, we almost there. Oh, wow. I know we getting close, Shabbata. Peace to the tribe. Peace to the tribe. Cut, cut. A high for the code keepers. Wow. We are back with another marvelous bill. We're going to get straight into it. Hala, hawa. Wow. Feels good to breathe with the real ones once again. <laughs> Special appreciation to the Drake Hines. 
That is the dragoon. Cool. We're going to get right to it. So, I used to think that it was a certain type of curse that was attached to me, per se, right? Because I will always come out and, and say something, you know, cause an awareness to a certain event or a stream of events that I felt like were just unfolding. All right, that were becoming um, something more than what they were, something more of an avalanche effect. All right, and um, and realizing in meditation, this is something that you know is pretty common especially through the bloodstream, right? And I realized that many of the ancestors gave plenty of warning, plenty of warning. Many of the ancestors came out and tried to warn and warn and give the tribe many heads up, you know what I'm saying? Heads up, hey, it's about to go down. You know, one of our ancestors for sure at some point in his time, in their time, in her time, told the whole plane, man, the whole plane that it would rain. Told the whole plane that it would rain and nobody listened. Nobody. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Nobody. And um, it's these things that I have to, you know, remind myself. Right? It's a reminder. Not only in just a metaphysical sense, but in a spiritual sense. that many have gone through what you're going through, what we're going through. All right? <laughs> so you are never alone. We are never alone. I say that to say, you know, I've been trying to tell the child just how much of a marvel they truly are, you truly are, we truly are. How much of a marvel we really are and um, how much when really intact and really tried up and choosing up with the creator that is the great spirit breath you know we're talking Hawaii when you're intact right Everything's in harmony when you have our ma, our ba, both masculine and feminine principle in perfect balance. By achieving that breath, you know what I'm saying? Restoring that key, it's an amazing flow. And a breakdown is a miracle, a thing, an act, event which causes astonishment, right? A wonderful story or legend. And although, you know, there are many ups and downs, smiles and frowns, your story is one of a kind, Shabbata. You are one of a kind, Shabbata. Some would even say that you're legendary. We are legendary. We're talking about a wonder, a surprise, a miracle, a miracle. Also, when dealing with the spelling of the word, all right, there is an attachment of a higher frequency 
so immediately, you know, you should feel the flow. You should know pure water stream and the energy that we're about to build into. But we just getting it like it's the first time. All right? So we're just talking marvel. Just mirror. And you should know every time something of marvel comes out, it has something to do with you. Just with the name alone. Bang. Let's get to it. <laughs> We're going to belly fly. Let's get it, man. My bro popping so, off in real time. Let's get it. And, you know, we're going to continue to do a slight investigation and see just exactly um, what else is being experienced throughout your um, It's popping off. They're saying, you know, the UK, Britain, you know, everybody's feeling London, France, everybody's feeling it's a tough world out there. Let's see what else we got. Hey, hi. Here we have Forbes and Art on our side. And it's talking about heat wave across Europe sparks wildfires and heat related deaths. Hmm. Heat related deaths. Now, in, in the newscasting, we got hundreds of deaths, right? So that's, that's big on that. It says soaring temperatures across Europe have resulted in wildfires and hundreds of heat related deaths as the continent battles a record breaking heat wave that officials have linked to climate change. Heat related deaths. All right. And that only made me wonder what heat related deaths were. You know, I, I was really interested in what they were. So I went ahead and dove a little into it. And, um, you know, we'll see what we come up with. All right. says two large wildfires that sparked last week in the pine forest just south of but I'm not sure that that would be France, right? Have scorched more than 24,000 acres and forced 14,000 people to evacuate as only 1,200 firefighters tried to stop the blaze which Lieutenant Colonel Oliver Shabbat from the Fire and Rescue Service described as a Herculean job, right? So, you know, they're out here trying to smash this thing. You got Spain dealing with their fires. They're dealing with heat-related deaths, okay? You know, heat strokes of the sort, we want to touch it. You got Portugal experiencing such a, a loss. They said 659 people. They got Britain, London, and other parts of the UK. But saying that they're all being hit the same way. So it made me want to, you know, dig into this heat related death even more. Like how are people necessarily dying of heat? That's what's you know that's what had me tripped out. Oh, okay, so here we have that word again, right? But then trying to display. Their burden. Hundreds dead as extreme heat wave roils 
Europe, UK to break records. Records he used to play. Love it. You see, 100 degrees Fahrenheit in parts of the UK, Portugal, and Spain. Dragons, dragons everywhere. Heat-related deaths have been reported across the continent. Heat-related deaths. Heat-related. Y'all thought it was funny when you know, the elders just tell me to take care of your health and get it right yourself, right? Take care of that body. Make sure you make sure you're synergizing with nature. God. You want to be synergizing with nature, so you, you, you can withstand such a climate change mm. and not potentially die due to related heat issues. But as usual, populists never listen. All right, population at large don't listen, leaving ways for them to make you no know, way for their own waste, their own disposal. Sometimes, you know, you just gotta let people do it to themselves. Facts. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, the creator don't want you to do anything at all but to just observe. I feel like that's what I'm doing right about now. I'm just observing. Not doing much at all. You know? What else there is to do? <laughs> Facts. What else is there to do? <laughs> <laughs> we observe it in real time, man. Let's get this dismount. We love you, natural by law, Mac. Max AI of the bro is popping off, man, with the black Adam. Adama. Get the full drop, man. Click the link below. Get in the classroom with natural by law. Put it in this man. And we know so called Adam was a dark skinned man because this is how it's displayed here. Marvels. Alright. Hey, I'll tell you about this attack. I like to, you know, say thank you for, you know, Tawada for just flowing with us for another beautiful, marvelous presentation. And this is part two of Tales from the Script. Catch you guys next time. Kalawa. Hey. You see what we talking about, man. You see what we got in Drop Nation, the steady flow. 
the steady wave, man, the same Nagas, the same supporters, man. Allah, man, these are our classrooms. You know, all praise Allah, we've been able to use YouTube, you know, as a tool, you know what I mean? And all my Nagas got their own classrooms, their own flow, man. You know, hit up naturalbylaw.net, you know, get your crystals flowing, man. Just get all the drop, get in the Patreon flow, get all the links, man. Click the links below and get in the flow, man. Natural by Law. Hey, you're doing it, man, and you're continuing the steady flow, the steady water, building your family in real time, man, and, and, you know, building up the tribe, man, in real time. So the water for you, man, for crystallizing the tribe the way you're doing. I love all the products. Drop it at naturalbylaw.net and let go. Hey, we appreciate you, bro. I said, can we hear from the aqua? <laughs> hey, Miss D, man. <laughs> Pop off, Let's go. There you go. That's all right. That's all right. We did it again. We did it again. Tawa to everyone who supported the family and Tawa to everyone who sent in what they could to help our family down here to help my Shabbata, help our Shabbata in Texas. We have four gift cards for four families that are in hotels. Uh, each one have $85 on it. Pop off. Hey, my squad with their feeding families, putting food on the table, man. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to all my Texas Nagas, man, because, hey, Nagas came together, man, to try up for the cons in Texas when it was time and we're going to continue to flow. You know, right now we're building it in real time and all my Nagas is seeing something in the sky, Scott. Ms. D, let go. All that drop, that nine is dropping about. Copper color creation dropping about. This is why they spray, man. They're trying to uh, block out the ether waves. That sun flow, that frequency, <laughs> the, the the gamma radiation, the marvel flow. <laughs> Not because it's mutating. <laughs> They're trying to slow it down. Trying to slow down the communication, the vibration. I know you see it every day over you. We see it, Aqua Miss D. We see it too. Yeah, we see it too. Hey, the water, Aqua Miss D, for all you do for your family, you know, raising strong, you know, bonds and bond, you know what I mean? And, Love to the tribe, tribe, man. Mama D, you know, Papa D, <laughs> what it do? Hey, it's the family, man. Hey, yourself, you know, this is the only way we can, uh, you know, follow up talking about them uh, spraying in the sky, sky. What's it got to do with the nanotechnology? The bros on the detox flow, one of the drops that's going to get included on the reconstruction pack, man. So, Get the drop in the drop shop at 432thedrop.com. Reconstruction pack. Shout out Not Spiral. Yosef. Hey, take the wheel. Get in the classroom with Yosef, the real. And look out for the classroom in the ether, man. Ether squad up. Tokef, but not. It's a little nanotech drop, and Let's get the intro and get some belly flop. And <laughs> let's go. Yosef, take the wheel. Shabbat Shalom. Let's go. To the whole team. Let's go. Shabbat Shalom, Trap Nation. Come on. Shirella. Let's go. Let's get it. Y'all see it. <coughs> Y'all screen. Burning. War in humanity. Nanotech in your body. And 5G. All right. This is part three or four. All right. <clears throat> if we need to, we'll go back and get the other ones. But this one right here will cut my eye. All right. Um, it's going to pop off. You heard me. 
Let's to, go. Uh, a couple of interesting things. I posted this on the website. It's about your Christmas trees. And they contain wire-like fibers. And our holiday trees that are being brought into our house are making people sick. So here's a little about that. The overhead weather modification technology spray aerosols dumping heavy metals on all trees and shrubs and everything else, including us and our pets and everything else. And the trees absorb the metals from the roots and die. Millions of trees and plants are dying all over the world. Just talking about that. And a Canadian herbalist advisory on the larva synthetic life that came off of a Christmas tree that a Canadian family brought into their home. So here's what's said. A young family informed him, this Canadian herbalist, that they cut down a tree and brought it indoors. Wow. And the whole family immediately got sick. Wow. They are sure it was from the tree. Does this mean no more real trees because of the falling of the sky? It's falling out of the sky? Hi. <laughs> Let's overstand and this understand everything. Remember what I told y'all, man. Look, the ways of man are not our ways. Yashirella, when you gonna understand? When are we gonna understand? The ways of man are not our ways, all right? Just because everybody else does, we're not out here playing follow the leader. You are the leader, all right? How do people follow you? Come, come. So, <clears throat> what she's talking about? These people, these elites orchestrating this chemtrail drop. What are they dropping? Y'all already know, okay? We've been getting a drop on it. But they're dropping on the trees, okay? They're dropping it on us. They're shitting on us. They're shitting on everything, all right? So we overstand, okay? Now, here it is. Okay, we just finished this, what you call it, this, uh, this hijack 101 Christmas, okay? And what people were doing, bringing these trees in their home, understand what's going on, all right? You're bringing the parasite, the actual parasite into the home, okay? We're being shitted on, all right? So, we don't take, we don't partake in this Christmas shenanigan, but we overstand. Okay, and we get the message, we're getting the drop. They're bringing the trees in the home and they get sick. Sick. Why? Because this technology is invading your home. The same tree, the same Christmas tree, my knock, that you're idolizing is bringing you a parasite, my knock. Facts. But the only reason it's bringing you this is because they're shitting on us. All right? And they know how it works. They know you're going to put this in your home. All right? And it's going to grow on you. So let's get it. Let's get the drop. Let's see what she had with it. Are they genetically engineering trees with some sort of nanogenetics? Yes, they are. Wow. So Alana Freeland sent this information to me because I sent her some information that I had found about um, how they're finding microplastics in the snow. And they're saying that this is no doubt a large part because the snow is being chemically nucleated via polymer fibers being delivered. You hear this, Drop Nation? You're hearing it. They're finding plastic in the snow. How you find plastic in the snow? How long we been living here? <laughs> how long have we been on here? On this earth, on a map, and you're telling me you're finding plastic within the snow? You're shitting on us, man. Delivered by jets and zapped by RF and mm. microwaves. Mm. So this is a response to the Canadian herbalist, and the microplastics are the least of the issues with the snow. Mm. The larva synthetic life that we see. The bugs that come out of the snow and into our homes here in Canada. Now, that is something to make you raise an eyebrow. Mm. And when you kill them and pop them with a burning laser and see wires and nanotubes hanging out of their abdomens, 
Now that's another story altogether. Wow. Bugs out the snow that when you pop them, you see the wires. Man, say it with me. Silent weapons, quiet wars, man. Yo, Seth been putting us on the trial. Let's belly fly. Wow. This um, on StopTheCrime.net in that five-part video YouTube series. There's so much more, of course, I could tell you. But again, it's going to be uh, mightily illegal to live outside the city growth boundaries and to live in the Wildlands Project. And after we take a, a short break, we'll get Alana up. We'll talk to Alana about polymers. Hi, let's bust down this RI, RFIC chip. Okay, so RFIC is <coughs> a go. radio frequency integrated circuit. So it's a circuit it's a chip. It's a motherboard. <clears throat> They're trying to put this in you. What do you think those polymer fibers are going to connect to? What do you think they transport? Data. Okay, data of you. Okay. Applications for RFIC include radar and communication. Okay. So you can get application to radar and communication. You, that's how you communicate the radar communication. Although the term RFIC might be applied to any electrical integrated circuit, okay, you are electrical, okay, you are a conductor operating in a frequency range suitable for wireless transmissions. Mm. Ready? <laughs> it's ready, man. It's ready for wireless transmissions, man. Yeah. Trying to tell you, man. I'm trying to tell you. Man. Let's do it. So, there's no considerable interest in RFIC research due to cost benefit of shifting as much of the wireless transceiver as possible to a single technology which in turn would allow for a system on a chip solution as opposed to more common system on package. This interest is fostered by pervasiveness of wireless capabilities in electronics. Mm. Uh, current research focuses on integrating the RF power amplifier, okay, PA with CMOS technology either by using MOSFETs or CG, CG, okay. HBTs on RF CMOS make signals integrated circuit chips. <clears throat> all right. And I'm all this down, man. We're just talking about chips. <clears throat> We're talking about certain parts of the chips, okay. <clears throat> Nonetheless, what you really want to be concerned with is this interest is bolstered by the prevasiveness of wireless capabilities and electronics, my dog. So let's let's not be naive. Let's go and put our thinking cap on, put it all together. This shit plastic on us. Mm. This nanotech plastic. There's smart dust. All this stuff is building within you on top of whatever else we don't know. Okay, so <clears throat> my main objective is for my ass to get to Walmart and go buy me a jeweler's hoop so I could dig on these uh, polymers, okay? Now understand we're going to cover a lot of things. We are, you know what I'm saying? Because we're going to get to the breakdown of how you need to purge yourself detox yourself from this from this shenanigans, all right? Cut, cut. Us. Okay. We're gonna get to it, but first we gotta understand what we're being hit with. All right. So we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. 
understanding this RFIC, man, as I was saying, you see what I'm saying? Um, it's within you. This shit and this plastic on us, this nanotech is growing. These fibers, these plastic transfer wireless data. They, tra they transfer data. This chips make you wireless. Understand why these chips make you wireless. They're bouncing off all these new antennas. They got posted around here for 5G. Ain't no play play. Ooh, ain't no play play. We talked about this, you know, connection. <laughs> I mean, with this nano and this 5G situation happening, man, and how that's related to, you know, all this other stuff that they, you know, want to push up on us, man, make it, you know, mando, mando for us to pop off. You know, you put it all together, man. You got a witch's brew, man. You got a witch's brew, man. We're going to get this dismount, man. My bro, your scepter real is popping off in real time. Hey, get in the classroom. This is Dr. Ed. Deterioration of the vitreous. The other thing I wanted to ask Marina about is uh, Mother B wants to ask you now. We're already on Mars. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Ed is saying that he's read information that we're already on Mars with the yeah, anti gravity. I, 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 can't, I can't really comment on that because I'd have to do the research to determine if I'm being lied to or, or not. I mean, you know, we pretty much are, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the exciting thing. Uh, that's exciting. People, yeah, that's true. You know, and, and there, are, there are so many possibilities. And I I don't tend to get attached to one or another. I just, if I'm wrong, I'm changing. Uh, but I just, uh, I just keep going with this, and it's all making a tremendous pattern. Yes, I agree. So we have uh, one more question here. Yes, Angela. Uh, is there one... Uh, is there a, a, there's not an acceptable number of these things once we detox from them, right? Okay, so she's and saying there's not, an, when, once we detox from these, is there an acceptable reduced number of these in our bodies? A way to manage that for a while ongoing? Yeah, because you're going to be breathing the next day, I assume. And you're going to be breathing in. It isn't just the nanoparticles, it's also sensors. Uh, I didn't mention that. The but sensors. You're breathing in nano sensors uh, that they're using for big data. I mean, they are very interested in your life and your biology and your brain, uh, to take my word for it. And they're, they're sucking up that. It's like they want to see how a nog is mutating, huh? They want to see it, man. Hey, too real, too true. Yo, Seth, real, my naga. Man, the water for being so real, man, at all times. Dropping great tribe up music and just, you know, being a pillar of inspiration for the real ones, the real nagas that need the real breakdown, man. Hey, a hop to the real family, the droplets, the queen, the aqua. We appreciate you, aqua door. And, uh, hey, this is uh, what keeps us on top, what keeps us on cool, man. And that detox is a real, you know, um, goal, man, for a nugget, you know what I mean, to get free of whatever they trying to, you know, hold us back with, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of nugget got to go through and deal with. Hey, uh, get in the classroom. Click the links below. Yo, sep the real. Drop Nation, we popping off. Hey, the bro, you be what they do, UB. Appreciate the bro. We're going to, we got a couple as we get out of here, man. We're going to do real quick belly flops on the way out of here, man, and just enjoy the wave. Oh, man, we got some press to flow. We might have to get it next time. <laughs> oh, man, just been surfing the wave, man. Hey, you be what it do. Let's get a couple minutes of a dismount or, you know, a, a belly flop <laughs> in the face, bro. Let's America go. Egypt, season one, episode nine. Several parallels are drawn between the two. India and Mesoamerica. India's role should not be dismissed in their contributions to ancient history. But as far as Assyria goes, I offer my own personal temperance. Using three solid points of triangulation, we will identify three points of strong biblical locational reference and move from there. First, the location.
location of the Tower of Babel. This spot can be seen above Earth, even on satellite. It is located in Quebec, Canada. According to the book of Jasher, chapter 9, verse 38, the tower, after it was destroyed by a fire from heaven, left a circumference of a three days walk. The total circumference of this crater is just over 100 miles, which is precisely three days walk, traveling 12 hours per day at three miles per hour. Mm. A person could circumnavigate the former tower in three days' time. The mountain at the center of this crater is named Mount Babel. This area I propose is the former location of the Tower of Babel. Jerusalem had become a tributary state. The process of Hellenization had all but completely infiltrated the city. According to accepted chronology, around 167 BC, Antiochus IV outlawed all Jewish religious rites and traditions, and additionally erects a statue of Zeus in the temple at Jerusalem. Mm. To add insult to injury, he sacrifices a pig on the altar of the temple to Zeus, thus completely desecrating the temple in Jerusalem. And what happened to their gods? Hey, Zeus. Hail Zeus. Jesus. They brought it right here. Put it in a new testament as if a new covenant was formed when the covenant is still. With the con of cons, Dawi. This act of wickedness set the stage for the Maccabean revolt. In less than 300 years after the revolt, the land changed hands from Seleucia to Caesar's Rome, and Jerusalem was finally sacked in 70 AD. The books of the Maccabees represent the Greek Hellene transitional period of historical literature concerning these people and their histories. Enter Josephus and the era of Gentile scribes. How long is truly between the sack of Jerusalem and the arrival of Europeans into the Americas? Even as early as 70 AD, it has been proven that America was the home to hundreds of different tribes and chieftains that thrived beyond the largest cities in Europe at the same damn time. The pre-Columbian civilizations of North America had long been dismissed as savage Siberian transplants who made no contribution to world history. But of course we know this is nothing more than a well-constructed lie propagated by the heathen. Archaeological, genetic, and even biblical evidence abounds connecting bloodlines across continents long before the year 1492 or even the Vikings. We investigate this mysterious reality with our evidence. Hey, pop off, bro. UB News been doing great work. Been popping off, man, for the tribe and, you know, been growing and growing and just allowing Nagas to see, you know what I'm saying, what the real recon is showing. And, you know, be really dedicated, man, to the investigation, man. Shout out to bro UB. Get in the classroom of UB TV. Oh, Dane Callaway, what it do, man? The big bro Dane been doing his thing. You know what I mean? Steady water, uncovering, you know, um, you know, true jewels, man, true gems for the tribe. So we're going to do a quick, a quick belly flop. Into the bros classroom, man. Hold up, man. We got dodge the side. Management system. Uh, my bad, y'all. My bad, y'all. We dodged it. We out of here, man. <laughs> Let's go. Videos that were basically warnings that there were strong possibilities of some significant things being changed prior to Biden becoming president. 
I'm going to give you a quick rundown. I posted a video concerning the history of a particular type of editing software or manipulation technology being used in the past by the likes of Hollywood production companies that were involved in the filmmaking industry. I also shared how this type of technology has since evolved over time, being welcomed as a new wave of a viral trend by the public through modification apps, mainly on their smart devices. These apps made it so that the public can utilize this type of technology conveniently with the click of a button while becoming enjoyable to the public with friendly or funny modifications conducted by the app itself to the faces and all bodies of the user through their smart devices onboard camera. Some backlash did appear from some of the public about these types of apps being available to adults and especially children. But the commotion quickly died down due to the rapidly rising popularity of these modification apps. In a few other previous videos concerning the same topic, I warned the public that this type of technology can be utilized against them without them having any idea because how they have been conditioned to believe that what they see on these social media apps are mainly real especially when it comes to public figures and highly publicized events, whether good or bad. This is the code name of this type of technology, but I'll refer to it as a modification software for obvious reasons, okay? Mm -hmm. That may prevent you from even seeing this video otherwise. Oh, and hold up. Before before I go any further, if you would like to learn more about this type of technology in full detail, I suggest that you pause this video now and go watch this video that I'm showing you right here on the screen. <laughs> robot, robot. The reason why is because this is the microphone that is actually in the same room with him and the cameras while the scene has been previously recorded. Listen closely. Whoever is holding the microphone is actually guiding him to his stop point in order to perfectly fit him into the frame of the previously recorded scene of speaking with random reporters. And I want you to notice that the holder, whoever's holding this microphone, is frantically attempting to get his attention to stop. But he misses his stop point. And you get to see that he has been cropped and edited into this scene, which was totally off script. <laughs> okay, now, if I slow it down at this point of the video, you will notice the color green surrounding the microphones as if a green screen is currently in use. Damn. The truth sounds stranger than fiction, man. Shout out to the bro, Dane Calloway, man, putting it all the way up for the knocker to dig on. And hey, man, hey, chew on it, man. You know, <laughs> chew on the veggie taco. You know, spit out the bones, you know what I mean? Do what you got to do, but get the drop, man. And bro, Dane's steadily dedicated as well, man. And, hey, shout out to the Oct that dropped this, man. Uh, this Bobby Hammond dancing with dragons, man. We we almost out of here. We making a dismount. Just got, you know, a couple more trifectas to hit you with, man. Hey, Bobby Hammond, salute. Let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
if you just a preach at a table, a lot of black look at slabs and put in the water. And once they put them in the water with, these, with this inscription on it, the monster didn't come by that. It's a, these two monsters used to come and tear this thing down. This is the historical knowledge. Now they got the lot that monsters and they got sightings for these things all over the world. Now let me explain what's going on. And she makes reference to it also too. And that is that these things exist in different dimensions, different astral planes. Back. Even in the book of the dead, they show you particular when you go into the book of the dead, you go down to certain hours of the planets, but you know, a lot of stuff turns into monsters. <laughs> and the Hounds of the barrier. To Atlantis, they're monsters. To Egypt, they're monsters. To the copper color con of India Superior, they're at the banquets. <laughs> they're at the weddings. This is the energy, frequency, and vibration that is within every naga. Let go. Got the drop, man. Yeah, hey. send the LinkedIn inbox the link hey, back. Hey, Dodge. All hijacks, man. We almost out of here. You know, this is a little Merkaba drop. You know, we've been talking about David and the star and the dragon, and now we're talking <laughs> the energy, frequency, vibration that's connecting it. You dig? You know, we're gonna talk about a little little Merkaba love to uh Teal Swan. Let's get some drop out of this, see what we got. Oh, man. Let's get it. When viewed, it looks like a three-dimensional Star of David. Why? Because the Star of David came about because people wore tetrahedra, where one point of the tetrahedra points up and the other points down, forming the shape of a star tetrahedron. This is why it is referred to as the Chariot of Ascension. When viewed, it looks like a three-dimensional Star of David. Why? Because the Star of David came about because people were observing the Merkaba. This is why the Star of David, among other things, represents the idea of the soul transcending the temporal world. Even though the Merkaba has been witnessed by mankind since spiritual curiosity arose, the Merkaba made its major debut in human consciousness before Jesus was born, amongst those who practiced early Jewish mysticism. <laughs> so some say it's called the Star of David because, you know, David looked like a star, right? David is a star. David is a dragon. It showed up in their visions. They began calling it Merkaba, which means to ride or thing to ride in, depending on its usage. They believed the Merkaba to be a spiritual chariot of sorts. Amongst religious scholars at that time, it was hailed as a chariot of the gods. Merkaba became a secret doctrine, only known to few. A few scholars and philosophers and rabbis 
preserved the information about the Merkaba, while many others forbid the study of it. Because of this, over the years, we've become somewhat confused. All over the world, there are people that have their own ideas about what the Merkaba is, and not many of them agree. The Merkaba is a geometric pattern that moves, either like a torch or like counter-rotating light fields. Mm. The energy field of a person, which is always present, takes on this pattern, which indicates that a person's consciousness is no longer purely focused physically and is now able to travel or is traveling through other dimensional realities. Take this one step further. When the Merkaba is activated to its full potential, it indicates that a person is able to take their body through stargates and other dimensional realities instead of simply taking their consciousness to other dimensional realities whilst leaving their body behind. Mm. The fully activated Merkaba indicates that a person is able to transform the entire body into light. It is a form of light travel. <sighs> in other words, in the final stages of Merkaba activation, through a shift in consciousness, the mind, spirit, and body completely integrate into one pattern of light and is then able to transcend the limitation of the physical time-space reality. Oh, now we're talking the greater light, my night. Let's get a little more for the dismount, man. It's getting good based on its own as a result of shifting consciousness. The Merkaba is a symptom. The Merkaba activates on its own as a result of shifting consciousness. Activates on its own as a result of shifting, of shifting consciousness. So as the con starts to connect, the Merkaba is going to pop off by default, man. We're talking the star of David. Huh? <laughs> hey, we're talking energy, frequency, and greater light vibration. The Merkaba is a symptom of increasing the vibration of consciousness, not a cause of increasing consciousness. The Merkaba becomes alive, and the Merkaba becoming alive means the energy field of a person reflects the fact that they have developed a pattern of consciousness which enables their perspective to be unrestricted by the limits of vibrational density of the physical dimension. Bang. The triangle is a pattern we see that emerges as a result of directed consciousness, which is experienced as movement. It is also a pattern that emerges as a result of the desire to merge the physical reality, mind, and spirit. These are the two primary reasons that the Merkaba takes on the interlocking triangular structure that it does. You do not have to go anywhere to travel interdimensionally, because going somewhere implies physical movement. The physical movement only belongs to the physical dimension. Hey, man. You know, all this is connected in some other type of... Uh ether flow you know this is what we're all bringing together in real time you know how's this ether flow connected shout out to the con that's been dropping <laughs> oh man dodge all hijack you know just dropping this flow and just connecting it for us a lot of this is coming straight out the comments straight out of the drop nation so the water the drop nation for this drop now take that merkable flow and connect it with this flow from mr mbb333 shout out to the bro, Lego. Yo, I'm going to take you guys to four different locations, coast to coast, and a couple of locations in between over here in the United States. We're going to go to our from 2022. I've seen an increase in 2022 of various types of unusual objects in the nighttime sky. This video. <laughs> think about this Star David flow and this Merkaba flow, and how does it match up to some of these things we've seen? Again, we're talking. Dragons, dragons, stars with a tail, stars, Merkaba, the flow, the key, the car, the goat. Footage was taken by Ron K. This is fast forward. I sped this one up a little bit. This was a great distance away from his location back on February 4th of 2022. Pretty good ways away, not super high off the ground, maybe three or four hundred feet. Difficult to say because it's quite a way <laughs> Merkaba flow huh it's away looks like based off of the distance it's pretty good size seems to be moving slowly across the nighttime sky changing colors like these other objects that you're going to see and some of them we got quite close up to the objects that people saw this one here was observed by Ron out in Maryland along the eastern coast of the United States we're going to look at three other locations of what appear to be the same exact object in the nighttime sky. I've been receiving a lot of these types of videos here recently. I try to share them with you guys as often as I can. 
We're going to go from the East Coast to the West Coast. Video footage sent in by John out of Sherwood, Oregon. Same type of light, right? Mm. Like the same exact thing. Only this one here tends to be more stationary in the nighttime sky. A little closer, at least from his field of view. He could zoom in a lot tighter on this thing. Looks a little higher, and it looks to be perfectly still. Change. <laughs> Merkaba, Merkaba flows are popping off, man. Mr. MB 3333 got the drop. View from Maryland, but it looks like the same exact object. However, <laughs> this one's a lot of Merkabas, man. A lot of, you know, stars of David flowing, huh? <laughs> a lot of frequency in the sky, sky. Hey, we've been trying to tell you, man. It's moving laterally across the sky. Looks like it's the same size. And again, multicolored, changing from green to light orange to at times purple, maybe a little bit of red. <laughs> like that rainbow dragon, shout out to copper color creation, yeah. You ain't spinning on no ball, man. <laughs> shout out to Eva, Eva Braun dropping that Eric Dubé flow. This is two minutes, man, for a fun flat drop dismount. Uh, you know, it says flat earth explaining Prove it in two minutes. We will be coming in out with some flat drops. So I'm just, you know, getting nice and cozy. Eric Dubay, take the wheel. USGS actually uses is the flat earth map. The UN logo is another example of it. The UN logo is actually a flat earth map divided into 33 Masonic sections, by the way. But you can just type in flat earth map on Google. It's a disc shape. The North Pole is in the center. All the continents go out from there. And Antarctica, instead of being a ice continent on the bottom of the globe, actually surrounds us 360 degrees. And how far that ice goes outwards is unknown at this point. So it's a cover-up. That's what the Antarctic Treaty is all about. That's why you can't independently explore Antarctica. And when people like Jarl Andehoy try to go down there, they get turned away at gunpoint and put in prison. So um, there's a big cover-up there in Antarctica as well. I don't know how far the ice goes, whether there's an edge, a barrier, a dome, or infinite plane. But what we do know is that the Earth and the water is completely flat. For, hey. As far as we can see and as far as we've measured. And the horizon is completely flat as far up as we go. All amateur rockets and all amateur balloons sent up over 20 miles, as high as they can go. The horizon is flat all the way around. And mm. it rises to the camera all the way up, it rises nope. to the level of the camera. So nope. This is totally impossible on a ball, no matter how big the ball was, as you rise up. Oh, no, they panning and all you see is flat surface. You don't see no curvature. This ain't no fisheye lens, man. Ain't no ball and water is always flat. You have to look down to see the curvature, look down to see the horizon. But what actually happens if you go up in a hot air balloon, the horizon rises right on up with you the whole way up. just keeps on coming up at eye level as high as you're going to go. That's just impossible on a ball. If you think about it, if, the, if you're on a ball and you're in a hot air balloon or a, an airplane, you should not be able to see out your window, straight out your window, the horizon. You should have to look down, further and further down, mm -hmm. the higher you ascend to be able to see that horizon. But you'll never look down to the horizon on the earth. It will always rise up to your level. Ooh, wait, that's two minutes of funk right there from Eric Dubay. It's a lot of drop on this channel. This Eva Evan Braun got a lot of Dubay drop. And uh yeah, you know, I definitely want to dig on some of this, man. Uh oh yeah, deer spinning ball, believe it. That's probably gonna be funny. This density drop, I mean, phew. You already know. So certain things flow, certain things sink, man. It's not gravity and physics. It's just called density. But I'm going to let you surf the wave and get that 
we coming in hot with that, man. We got some more cities to go, you know what I mean? Some more episodes to uh, dig on in the near future to break down and have some fun. Uh, yeah. Woo! Okay, okay. We're just talking about the fall of Atlantis. Hey, man. The waterfall might not get surfing the wave on the IG. And, you know, hey, Conclave. Conclave. Hey, CJ over there in Joy World popping off. And Naga's got some panels coming in. And it feels so great to have Naga's always stopping by, man, and putting in that work with Joy World. Keep support, man. Click the link. Solar panels coming in, man. Cloud Bay's popping off, man. Sending great pics of great progress, man, in real time. For Joy World. Hey. For Naga Field. So everything you're doing is helping us complete the goal. And we got, uh, you know, some ways to go. We got plants growing, you know, panels, solar panels coming in. Naga stopping by, man, making sure the, the poles are straight. You know, none of us have ever built <laughs> a cedar wood fence on an entire acre of land, my Naga. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, man, we're learning in real time and just, just being so encouraged in real time to hit this checkpoint and do something that, you know, we've never done before. So. You know, this is our sanctuary. This is our flow. All praise to Wah for the wall of protection, man. <laughs> for the rainbow dragon in real time. Keep surfing away. We got the Nagas, you know, putting the ceiling on the fence. All the baby droplets. You know what I mean? We we hitting checkpoints, man. Press the John one, Hano. Call me Hano. Ahab, Chef Connie, man. And I give that to the tribe. I dedicate that to the tribe. Oh, Dizzle Fitty, checking by, man. We over here popping off, man. Having a great time, man. And, I, you know, I'm happy, man. Shout out Simply Natural. Support, support, man. And continue to support the cons because the cons got the water. I said the water. Yeah, man. <laughs> Imagine Mount Roraima, the source of the Orinoco River, the source of the Amazon. Our giant trees are growing again, and we're getting our our images back, man. <laughs> they try to change up our images. we getting them right back, man. Man, Drop Nation's been dropping that drop. <laughs> Things are popping off. Ice walls are, are being uh, navigated, you know what I'm saying? And the Naga, you know, is continuing to see what we do. <laughs> Baby Naga's popping off. You know, we're having a good time on IG, man, so... Hey, hi to my Nagas for all your support, all the continuation. You know, I've been surfing away with the Yandex, um, you know, search engine. I, I seem to find things a lot faster over here sometimes when I'm looking. So I'll leave the link below so you can surf the wave in Yandex. You know, I pulled up this Presta flow. It started talking about this St. Thomas and all this. And we got to dig on St. Thomas, man. But we out of here, man, for the dismount. You know, it says these facts would definitely suffice, but further evidence appears in the form of a statement. And in the large India is buried the body of St. Thomas. I just feel like this St. Thomas is a reflection of somebody. We got a lot to dig on, but what large India are they talking about? Oh, my bad. We're just talking India superior. So even they're telling you, for those that have eyes to see, <laughs> is to hear that there's a large India or a great India or a superior India that they put in this St. Thomas flow. And they say Thomas flow is connecting with the Presta flow. Yeah, we're we just talking Presta John, the ruler of Ethiopia. This link is called Presta John Fiction and History by Mir Bar Elan. All right, and they going in, man. So, what larger India? We're going into the romances. Shout out to the Templar, Alexander, and this connection with Alexander and Preston John. It's just a lot of things happening, man, but we'll get it. Look out for 100, I mean 103, <laughs> exclusively at 432thedrop.com, man. Yeah, there's a myth going on with this St. Thomas. Did he come from South India <laughs> or India Superior? Did he land in Kerala? Oh, we're talking about Carolina. 
Cara, Cara, Katai, Carolina. Preach to the people of Carolina. Tamil lands. Oh, now we're talking Raja Hiraja Chola in there in the Tamil dynasty. All is connected back to the Preston, man. All is connected to the Preston. And they even talk about his name, Tomas, form of Arabic or Aramaic, Te Ta Ta Oma, twin. Tomas is twins. Compared to Syriac, Toma, twin or Arabic, Tao. Tao. Oh. <laughs> so Thomas is Tao. Uh oh. Uh oh. Cities of Go. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, uh, yeah, you, you know, we're going to get back on these uh, cities of gold, man. Uh, just know that uh, Tao is Tomas. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, boss. <laughs> it's a lot going up, man. Oh, man. Yeah. We got to dig on some of these translations, you know, digging on the acts of Thomas, get the babies out and maybe connect it with. Tau, <laughs> we know that Tau is the mark, the sign, the last letter of the Hebrew. And that's all they're doing here is trying to connect it with the Hebrew. You know, so they have a couple good little links. The Acts of St. Thomas. And over here, man, they're going into this Gunda Forest drop, King of the Indians, connected with this holy apostle Thomas. Yeah, man. And this Gunda Forest drop, he's being compared with this king of the Indians. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, that's the other one. This is what they say is written in. They said the Rambam Patukul Toma Parvam, a document of Malayalam, purported to be written by the first disciple of Thomas. So, we can't even understand this, this, uh, you know, language yet. But, you know, we're going to dig on it. <laughs> Maybe we can decipher the code. Maybe it has something to do with the Voinic. Didn't they call it like a Hebrew, Hebreo Indianized? Come on, man. It looks a little like the Voinic flow. King Gundafor. Yeah, man, he, he was popping off. They call him an Indo-Parthenian. Not very close to where people search for the kingdom of Prester John. However, he's still mentioned in the letter alongside St. Thomas the Apostle. After J.C.'s death, or are we just talking Joshua? Rainbow Dragon. All the disciples went to different places around the world to spread the, to spread the word. Okay. Yeah, how does this connect to Joshua and how does it connect to the Prester? And who's the king of the Indians, man? Preston John was certainly a mysterious figure of the medieval world. We will likely never know for sure if he truly existed. Okay. It's a mythology, right? We're, mytho we're mythological people. Atlantis is a myth. Lemuria is a myth. Preston John's a myth too, right? And we'll have to make do with that little what little information we have, some of the things we know today are the possible candidates who may have survived as inspiration for him and his kingdom. The historical figures mentioned in this letter, his connection to the Crusades, yeah, because they're looking for 500 years for the Preston. His connection with the Crusades and how the letter fell into the modern hands through Sabine Barine Gold's curious myths of the Middle Ages, while most believe he is merely a fictitious king made up of an imaginative person for political gain or fame, taking inspiration from already existing stories, we can never know for sure the real truth of whether or not Preston John existed, no matter how exaggerated the story might have been will likely be lost to the ages. Who or who is Preston John? <laughs> and is he admit that they were looking for 500 years? Ah, man. You know how we 
you know how we do, surfing the wave with Drop Nation. Man. We ain't gonna let them hijack us no more, man. Searching for the cities of gold. Oh, King Quinto, Charles Kento. We surfing the wave, man. Continue to flow at 432thedrop.com, man. The water for your contributions. Hey, we in battle time live on the air. Look out for the fifth wave popping off. Shoot, we popping off now, man. It's all happening. So, hey, just tune in and look out for the schedule. We drop it in hot. And it's all happening, man. My nog is in here, Melvin. Trey Colgate dropping that drop on the Book of David. Tom Fat is dropping all kind of drop. I mean, you know, he's over here hitting the milestones, bringing that Bethel flow. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's building. You know, go ahead and get this drop from the bro and build with the bro. He's dropping maps, cartography. Tom Fat is going up. Zion trains in here, popping off. Info I got a while back about the book of Daniel from Yehuda Ben Israel. Some trickery going on. Hopefully, this is a much better read for your personal or peruse. <laughs> Allow white the water Zion train. The water to all my nagas. Slow cool. Dragon Dragon Canoe EC. All my nagas in here popping off. Come fat, stay popping off, man. Oh, man, Big Ten, what it do, Charmaine? It's all happening, man. Check in at the drop. Chatter box. Drop, drop, chatter, chatter, chat, chatter. Surf the wave in Drop City. Pre-order or get the reconstruction pack. Hey, I'll talk my knowledge that pre-order. If you haven't got yours yet, be patient with us. They're coming out even more this week and top of next week as well. And you will get your drop. I'll be catching up on the emails as well this week. So look out for that as well. And the water for your patience, allowing us to hit these checkpoints with our droplets and pop off in real time, man. You know, it takes a village, my nigga. It takes a village, man, <laughs> to build a fence, to build a wall of protection. Blue, purple, red, white, linen, gold thread. Keep surfing the wave with Drop Nation and we'll keep, you know, sharing and let you know what we up, you know, what we up to, you know, what we up you know, flowing with, man, you know, it's always a good time, hey, shout out my Jigga, just dropped a brand new banger, man, we just dropped it on the IG, and we dropped it on the YouTube as well, so I know you're flowing with it, I know you're flowing with it, my Jigga, we out of here, baby, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, wow. Ah, wow. Ah, wow. Let go. So, want me to be so, but I never sell. Want me on the stair, in the VR hell. Whenever I don't feel, but I will make bail. Ah, uh, why? They don't want me to breathe. Can't try on my lean. Now the blood on me. Fighting with a king. Laws in your famous. I got the real game. Also in my genius. Uh, wow. 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 Let go. Wow. 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 But I never will. Yeah. Most I would be real. My mom made a steal. I'm king of the hill. I live on my tail. Ah, wow. Let me catch my breath. Need to stop my chest. Never second best. Gold on nothing less. Blue, purple, red. Yeah. White man ain't got good. My child that we play. Ah, wow. Ah, wow. Ah, wow.
Wow. Wow. Wow. Wow. Wow. Wow. Watch me flow. Watch me flow. Watch me flow. Watch me flow. 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 Let go. La wa. Keep surfing away.